What are objects some YG care in Python? Well, you may not know it, but everything you've done in Python so far has used objects. Even something as simple as declaring an integer is creating an object in Python, as integers and all types for that matter are objects. Okay, so you now understand that all types are objects, but what the hell's an object? Fundamentally, an object is just a way of relating data and related functionality together into a compact and reusable unit. String is a good example of this. When you enter a string into a variable, it's creating an object which has all these methods against them, such as upper. That upper will take your string data and convert it to uppercase. You don't need to know anything about how the string is stored in memory or with a character set or anything to enable to uppercase it. The object handles all of that itself. You just have to call the method. You can also have as many objects as you want within your program. And they can be as simple as a string or they can try and simulate real world objects. When you hear the term object in programming, you also hear the term class. So what is a class and how does it differ from an object? Classes are really blueprints for what objects are going to be. They lay out what data is stored and what methods we have to manipulate that data. And as they define everything about the object itself, they lay out the contract for talking to that object through your code. Multiple objects can be created from the same class as it's just a blueprint. The other great thing about classes is that they can inherit from other classes. And there you have something like a base class that will define a car, for instance. You then may have multiple variations of car classes on top of that. But because they share the same methods at the heart, dealing with a car in your program is the same for all cars. Okay, so the classes brought to you today are going to be themed around shapes. So let's start off with a nice, easy shape of a rectangle. General consensus in Python is that the first letter of your class will always start with a capital. The class keyword tells us we're creating a class. Rectangle is the name of our class. And then we have a colon to say, well, let's start. Okay, the first thing we want to do is define how the rectangle is created. You don't actually have to do this, but we're going to because we need to capture certain things when we create the object. The way you identify how a class gets created is in a special method called init. Now you'll notice the init function has an underscore underscore before and after it, but it also has created these brackets for the parameters and it's automatically created the word self. Self is basically a reference to the running object on top of the class. It'll make more sense as we continue talking. For a rectangle, we need its length and we need its width. And we're going to store those. So we'll do self dot length equals length, self dot width equals width. And that's it. We've basically now set up the base data for our class on its creation. We're passing in the length and width, and that will be stored in the object itself, hence self. So these data pieces we've created as part of the object are now attributes. And we can actually ask a class what its attributes are, but we'll get to how to call those in a little while. Let's create some methods that act upon this object. And I'm going to create two methods. One is going to be area to calculate the area of the rectangle. And the way we do that is length times width. So if we return self.length times self.width, that basically will return the area of our rectangle. OK, we're also going to do something a little bit fun. I haven't done this before. We are going to create something that draws a shape. And you'll notice that when we're calling area and draw, we don't need to pass anything into those other than the reference to the object itself. And that's because the keyword self stores all the attributes of that class. So how would we draw a rectangle? Well, we're going to use something called turtle. So we're going to import turtle as T. And then the way turtle works is you just basically tell it where to go. And we're going to say T dot forward. This will move the pencil forward by length. So self dot length. Then we're going to turn by 90 degrees. So write 90. And actually, then we're going to draw the width. So I'm actually going to change this slightly so I don't have to write as much code. And let's create a dimensions. And dimensions is going to be equal to self dot length, self dot width, self dot length, and self dot width. So basically, I'm defining each of the sides. And then for this, we can just do for dimension in dimensions, forward dimension, and t dot right 90, which turns the pencil 90 degrees. Hopefully, this works. We're going to create our object directly after our class here. We would normally store the class in a package and then reference it. But just to show you, we can create one. Let's do my rec equals rectangle. And we're going to pass in our length and width. Length equals 100, width equals 50. So if we run that, you'll see it's finished. It created an object. 
didn't do anything with it. So how do we get something out of the object? Well, we talked about the attributes, which are these length and width. We can actually get those by saying myrec.length and wrap that in a print. And then if we run that, we should get 100, and we do. Let us print the area of my rectangle. And we'll need to use the brackets because it's a method. And you'll see we now have an area of 5,000, which is the length times the width. And the fun bit, let us draw my rectangle. If this works, I'll be amazed because I use turtle like never. And if we try and run that, the drawing appears on my other screen, but you can see that it's drawing it. And actually, let's just put in a time dot sleep two. That'll keep the drawing open two seconds after it finishes drawing. So you can see it's drawn there and then two seconds later it will disappear. So it drew our rectangle. Now that's all very well and good, but the real power from this comes that I can now define a square and I don't have to do an awful lot of code. So if we do class square and we put brackets here and we're going to inherit from rectangle. And the only thing we need to change to make all of this work for a square is just the instantiation. So if we create def underscore underscore init, and we're just going to take side length. And then in here, what we do is we call super dot init, and we can do length and width, and we're just going to pass side length into both. And then in here, we can just my square equals square, side length is 100, and then we can do exactly what we did up here, but I'm going to put my square in all these variables. So if we run this, we'll see that it's printed out the rectangle and now it's printed out 100 by 100 square on top of it. And you can see our areas are 5,000 for the rectangle and 10,000 for the square. So there we managed to create two different shapes just off one object. The problem with having our attributes exposed is I can actually change the dimensions of my rectangle after it got created. And I might not want to let that happen. So there's some concept of both protected and private attributes. In Python, to create a private attribute, you would do underscore, underscore. And if you try to look up the underscore, underscore length or underscore, underscore width, you wouldn't get anything back. If you want to do protected, which really means that only the class that wraps it or inherits from it can use it, then it would be single underscore. Now note that the single underscore doesn't really do anything from your perspective. You can still access and change underscore values. It's just generally accepted that if you've got an underscore, it's protected and you don't do that. But underscore, underscore will completely protect it. But I'm actually going to refactor these so I don't have to do all that effort. So refactor, rename, and we're just going to do underscore, underscore, and again, the width. And you'll see it's changed our program. And if we run it, it's drawn our objects again. Nothing's really changed. But if I now do print my rec dot underscore, underscore length, you'll see we got a warning. And if we run it, you'll see attribute rectangle object has no attribute length because it's private to the object. Only the object can see the internal attributes. There is another way of creating an attribute, and that is you can just create a variable in the class. So we can do shape type equals rectangle. And then in the square, we would just go down and we can either change it in the init, but I would prefer to do it in exactly the same way. So we're gonna just do square, shape type is square. And if we now change this underscore underscore to shape type, you'll see we'll get rectangle 5,000, draws a diagram and we got 10,000. Now what we can do going further to this, we've got our square inheriting from our rectangle, but we can also inherit rectangle from something called an abstract class. And an abstract class is basically a class that cannot create an object. It can only be used for inheritance down the line. So we can say we have a new base class of shape and that anything created from shape will do exactly the same thing from your program's perspective. So we'll create a new class called shape. And it's going to inherit from a special package class called ABC, which is abstract base class. So from ABC, import ABC, and then shape is going to inherit from ABC. We know that our shape so far have had area and draw. So we're going to copy those into the package and we're just going to pass them. So they won't do anything themselves. And then we're going to decorate these. And a decorator is basically a directive. You can write your own decorators. We'll get to that in a whole separate video, but no for now. To put a decorate on something, we just do at. And ABC has some decorators called abstract method. So ABC to abstract method. And we're going to do this to here as well. ABC to abstract method. So now our rectangle can import from shape. And if we run this, our program should work just the way it did before. And it did. So nothing changed. So what was the point? 
Well, it now means that any shape I create from the shape parent class will work in the same way, i.e. it will always have an area and it will always have draw. So I can always call those two at a minimum. If an object decides to add more stuff, then we won't be able to use that, but we can still use the basics. And just to prove that, if we rename rectangles area function to area two and try and run it again, we're going to get an error. Can't instantiate abstract class rectangle without an implementation for abstract method area. And that's basically telling us that our rectangle must have an area. And so put that back in and everything will run as it did before. This video really just scratches the surface of what objects and classes are capable of. We'll expand this further in future videos as we get more and more complex in our designs. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, then please leave a comment and let me know exactly what you liked and consider clicking the like button. In our next video, we'll be talking about Python comprehension, both for lists and for dictionaries. These are really fast ways of looping over a list or a dictionary and asserting some criteria over it to create a new list or dictionary. So don't miss out, that video should be showing top left right now. And with that, thank you for watching, and I hope to catch you on the next one.